All right, so today uh, the focus is on website redesign planning and process, the work before the work. Uh, so your organization is um, uh, beginning to think about doing a website redesign or maybe in the, in the early stages uh, of a website redesign. And this is to help you provide, uh, or help you get kind of like a framework for some of the foundational work you can do um, even before you start the process formally. Um, if you are doing this before, uh, you know, you, you go into an RFP, it'll help your RFP be much more focused. Um, the, the idea is that there's a lot of groundwork that you can and should do before you actually, quote, start the redesign process. Um, so this is what we'll get into today. Uh, but very briefly, uh, a little bit about um, Parsons TKO. Uh, even though we're talking about the website today, we see ourselves as um, uh, using the idea of engagement architecture that holistically addresses your entire um, outreach platform and how you engage with your audiences. So again, we'll be focusing on the website as one of those touch points, one of those ways that you engage your audiences. But as you'll see throughout, we'll kind of talk about how that relates to different um, uh, you know, other platforms uh, in your engagement architecture and other people and processes. All right, so what are the elements uh, of success, some sort of foundational things that you can do to make sure that your website uh, redesign project goes well. Uh, so there's we'll kind of focus on four four areas, either and any of which could be its own kind of in depth process, but we'll kind of touch on try to touch on all of them. Uh, so the first is gather your people. Uh, so websites. Uh, website redesign uh, is a, a tr tremendous opportunity to get people together um, and uh, and uh, start to build a community of consensus um, uh, and build a community of strategic input uh, across organizational silos. So as you're starting to think about the website, think about the people you know, who should be involved. Uh, and it's going to pay off in a lot of different respects. Uh, the second element is trying to get really clear about your goals, uh, your audiences, and the interactions your site uh, needs to support to help you define those goals or to help you meet those goals. You know, a lot of times people, when they are undergoing a website redesign, they think, OK, well, What's, how is it going to look different? What are the new features going to be? Uh, uh, you know, how are, what, con what content can we get rid of? Kind of get, you have to go back to basics um, of what you're trying to do, who you're trying to reach, and how they're going to interact with you. Another key step is organizing your content. That again, <laughs> we've done we've done other webinars on taxonomies and inf information architecture. Content organization and content planning is a huge part, um, but you can start to kind of get a handle on what you need from uh, content in your redesign. And finally, I'll touch on this briefly at the end, but planning for integrated engagement. Uh, again, one of the one of the challenges we see uh, organizations facing when they do a website redesign is a lot of time the website redesign can suck up a lot of the oxygen and sort of leave other engagement, uh, other aspects of your engagement architecture. Uh, uh, you know, either leave them to the wayside um, or, you know, not, not really give them room. Um, but, you know, you need to think your website is one of the many tools that you have at your disposal for engaging your audiences. So you want to be thinking, well, how are we going to be using email um, moving forward? How are we going to be using our CRM moving forward? If you have an events system, volunteer systems, donations, et cetera, all, are the, all of these pieces relate to the the website um, and really planning for those holistically is going to, to benefit you in the long run. Okay, so just one, another another point on that before we get into the website redesign process. Um, again, that your website is just one part of your engagement architecture. We have this graphic that we like to show that really puts your audiences at the center um, because you are trying to deepen engagement with specific types of audiences, but also individuals. So your website is one way of communicating and engaging with those individuals, but it is one of many, right? So it is, you know, people find you through search, they engage with you on social media, they come to your events, you email them from a list or from any lists um, in, for, to facilitate lots of different types of uh, interactions and engagements. So as you are thinking of your website redesign, 
you know, really think through the other platforms that are part of your engagement architecture, um, the people that are involved. Uh, and you know, often we are uh, working with people in the communications team um, uh, or you know, communications or marketing or outreach who see, or have traditionally had like ownership of the website. Um, but it's a great opportunity to really think across organizational silos and say, okay, how are we engaging with our audiences across the board? And what role does the website play in that? Uh, and then also looking through the processes that are involved uh, in, in uh, running the website, creating content for the website, syncing content for the website up with email, um, syncing it up with social promotions, et cetera. Um, a website does not exist in a vacuum. And uh, it's the kind of thing you get a nice new car, you got to run it, you got to maintain it, uh, you got to make sure that people know how to drive it and things like that. So just pulling the, pulling the lens out a little bit there. All right, so step one, gathering your people. Um, so we'll just talk about some principles for gathering your people. I'm not gonna spend a, a lot of time on this, but just some helpful um, uh, tips and ideas for uh, the, the, the people part of the process. So early on thinking about who are your project champions, who is, you know, who, who has a clear vision for the site, um, uh, investment in the site, um, someone who is going to do the legwork of, of facilitating and gathering internal um, feedback um, and, and really champion, champion the site. Um, you know, a lot of the best site redesigns uh, go well because they have a really strong internal champion who uh, cares about the big picture vision for the website, understands that it is a means to an end, and also uh, can provide um, kind of leadership and uh, um, connection to other le leaders, senior uh, leaders, executives in the organization to really say, here's why the website's important. Here's what it's helping us do. Um, you know, you need a, a, a project champion. You do want to involve lots of people, but you want a champion or champion, some small core group of people that are really going to, to push the, the process forward. Think about how you're involving uh, folks across your organization. Um, Again, you know, it, depending on what what uh, department or, or silo within your organization the website officially falls under, um, it, it represents your organization and it should represent uh, the strategic goals of your organization that are going to be across multiple, you know, across all all departments, um, all uh, you know uh, units of your organization. This is your time to, to begin building a community of consensus. So really getting to a sense of what, what people need the website to do. Um, and I kind of break them those, those ideas out into two categories here on the right, um, because a lot of times what you're gonna get if you go around and say, well, we'll redesign the website, people will say, oh, well, it's disorganized. I don't like the colors. The, the pages are too busy. There's, those are kind of like feedback on the experience of the website. And I have that sort of at the bottom here, feedback on um, the anecdotal experience of like, oh, it's hard to use, I can't find stuff, or I don't like the design, I don't like that color. Um, it's hard to enter content into the system, um, et cetera. Those are all useful pieces of information. Um, and you wanna, you wanna be open to those and collect those. Uh, but more foundationally, you want people to provide input um, on the strategy for the website, the audience, audiences for the website, uh, the goals of the website, what key engagement experiences does the website need to facilitate? And those are all points that we'll get uh, into in the next sections, but really thinking about involving people, not just as you know, checking a list of like, what don't you like about the site? What do you want the new site to do? Um, because you'll, you'll get a lot of the same answers. It needs to be better organized, needs to look nicer, needs to feel more modern, right? You'll get a lot of those kind of surface answers, which are relevant, but don't really get to the heart of, you know, what your website is for uh, and how it can help your organization as a whole, uh, as well as the individual, um, you know, individuals and, and uh, groups in your organization. So that's a, that's a good um, uh, kind of first step is making sure you have the right people uh, involved in the process. All right, so defining goals, audiences, and interactions. So this is a really big topic. We'll kind of scratch the surface on this, um, uh, on this a little bit here um, and 
know that there are a lot deeper processes processes that you can go into here, but this should help you get going um, to really uh, get a sense of what your site is for. Um, and depending on where you, uh, you know, where your organization is, um, some of these might already be defined. Uh, some of these uh, might need refining. Some of these, you know, maybe aren't are clearly articulated anywhere or different people in the organization have different perspectives on, on these things. But what you're trying to do is kind of create a consensus foundation for, you know, who are the audiences that your organization is trying to engage with an influence and what are your goals for, for influencing them? Um, I don't think, or I, you know, I, I assume that most people on the call um, are not in the business of generating ad revenue from their websites. So getting people to the site to consume content is not the end goal, it is a means to an end. Um, so thinking through who are the people that are engaging with the site uh, or engaging with our organization and what are our goals for them? What do we want them to ultimately do to advance our, uh, our mission? And then on the flip side, thinking about your audience's goals, getting a sense of uh, the actual engagement uh, that your audiences will have with the site. What are they coming to the site or interacting with your organization or in, in order to do? Um, so what are those major touch points where your goals and your audience's goals uh, intersect? So you see that in the nice Venn diagram here um, that you know we call these engagement touch points. So this is anywhere where your audience has goals and they are interacting with your organizational goals. So you are trying to influence your audiences, build affinity with them, engage them, and they are coming to you to answer questions, to complete specific missions, to 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 get things done in one form or another. Um, so really understanding what those organizational goals are and audience goals um, are going to be uh, really critical to make sure that the website can support those engagement touch points. And just as importantly, I'll, I'll start to sound like a broken record, uh, the other aspects of your engagement architecture uh, uh, can support that. So uh, a very common goal is, uh, um, you know, if an engagement touch point, it would be like email sign up, right? Our organizational goal is not to get people to sign up for email. Like you're not, you're not getting points for number of email signups you have. Um, you have email, you want to use email in order to slowly move audiences along a path of engagement. All right, so overlaps. So one of the reasons it's really uh, useful to get to, um, to, to audiences um, is that many of your audiences, maybe some of their goals will, will intersect or overlap. Um, some of the content needs will, will overlap. Um, so what you want to actually uh, do, and we'll, we'll do an exercise on this in a, in a second, is think of like what, what you're trying to do with your audiences and what they're trying to do with you. Um, some audiences have particular needs that then you'll need to address in specific ways. Um, many audiences have uh, general needs. Um, so maybe the same piece of con content can serve seven different audiences. You don't necessarily need seven different versions for each audience. But taking a moment to define those audiences uh, and their goals can help you understand where those overlaps exist. All right, I have, two, I have a question here from Alex. So by engagement touch points, you're referring to touch points on the website, like email sign up, membership sign up, donations, et cetera. Uh, yes, and. So engagement touch points, um, in, in this context, we're talking mostly about engagement touch points on the website, um, but holistically, we think of engagement touch points as anywhere your organization is engaging with someone. Um, so that can be engagement touch points on the website. So visiting a web page, signing up for email, um, at that point, once they've signed up for email, their engagement touch point will be through email. Um, you can send them emails to, to donate, at which point they have a touch point at email and a touch point at a donation page or a donation process. Um, if they hear about you from social, that's another place where um, they are having an engagement with you. So yeah, while we're focusing mostly on engagement touch points on the website here, um, we think of it more, more holistically in terms of all the different ways that that you uh, interact with your audiences. 
Um, I think that's, a, a, I'll emphasize one more point about that is that a lot of times with organizations, you have, um, you have engagement touch points that actually don't have to do with the website at all, right? So the more affinity you build, especially with high value audiences, the less likely they're going to just, or the, the less likely they are just going to need to come to the website to do stuff, the more likely it is that maybe you're on the phone with somebody or you're emailing them directly, or you have a program lead that has a close relationship with them that's reaching out directly and saying, hey, come to this event, or please forward this policy brief um, to your staff. Um, so capturing those types of interactions and engagement touch points is really critical um, because your website is, um, it's, it's a, uh, again, it's, it's a vehicle and often it doesn't know as much about who's there, <laughs> who's visiting it and what they're trying to do. You're trying to get to that point where you have like direct contact with someone. That's why uh, email signups are so critical. Uh, so once you have someone's email address and say, and they say, Hey, send me emails, then you can really start um, uh, developing a deeper, uh, more focused relationship. Okay. All right. So we're going to do, uh, a, oh. we're going to do two exercises and to talk about organizational goals and audience goals. And this is actually a screenshot from one of the workshops that we run uh, where we kind of really dive in deep and break down uh, and explore these different uh, aspects of a site. So if uh, people want to write, write on a piece of paper or submit to um, uh, put, put their ideas in chat, I want you to take a second to think about your audiences and what you want them to ultimately do. So what your organization needs your audience to do uh, in order to advance your mission. Uh, so in the in the structure of we need an audience to blank to, to do something specifically. Um, so I have two different examples here from two different types of organizations. So the first one is we need policymakers to implement our policy recommendations and to publicly advocate for our policy recommendations. Again, this is high level organizational goal. Um, there are ways that you can push policymakers along or support them in that, but those are not the end goals, right? You target policymakers because you want them to Im implement policy. Um, from another type of uh, organization, we have, we need parents to improve the mental health of their children and advocate for mental health in their schools and communities. So this is a mental health organization um, that is trying to improve mental health um, in across the board or maybe specifically in children, but they're saying, hey, we need parents to play an active role in improving mental health uh, and mental health outcomes. So I'd love uh, to take for you to take just a few minutes uh, to write down a couple examples here and uh, any any volunteers that would like to throw uh, throw an example in chat, that would be great. Um, if we could have a couple examples in there. So I'll pause for just a second or a minute or two. And also feel free to put in chat if there are any questions uh, about this.
All right, awesome. Kind of got a couple examples uh, in the chat. Um, so I'll, I'll uh, address these. So one from, uh, from Will uh, is, uh, we need fund holders to identify and invest in projects our nonprofit partners are undertaking to improve the community. Great, yeah, so fund holders as an audience and um, investing in projects that our nonprofit partners are undertaking. Um, so that, that is the ultimate organizational, uh, or one of the, the ultimate organizational goals. Um, getting fund holders to invest in projects. And that can be supported by lots of different types of content and lots of different types of you know, interaction on and offline. Um, so that's, that's great. Um, we need community health center staff to attend our trainings to improve their service to patients. Right, yep. So you know, uh, community health center staff, we want them to improve their service to patients, right? We want better uh, you know, service to patients uh, at community health centers. And one of the ways we do that is by getting, you know, providing trainings. So I would say that training would be like an offering um, that you are providing in order to uh, you know, it, um, you know, it, improve service. Um, need donors to be able to find nonprofit information easily. Um, uh, so yeah, Suzanne, that's, that's a great point. So your, you know, if your target audience is donors, we need them to find the nonprofit information uh, more easily so that they can donate, right? Um, you know, and maybe also find other ways to engage with the nonprofit. Um, we need local government officials to acknowledge policy recommendations we've made and commit to discussing them with community stakeholders. Um, Stefan, that's a great example. Uh, Stefan is with PTKO. <laughs> so uh, great, great, great example, um, because that, that also uh, talks about the interlap with, with, uh, with multiple audiences. So local government officials would be one audience um, and other community stakeholders. So uh, saying, hey, if we're trying to advance policy, that's gonna actually cover different audiences. We need government uh, you know, officials to, to come out and support and acknowledge them um, and support engage them with community stakeholders. And maybe those different audiences have somewhat different needs um, or somewhat different levels of connection with your organization for how you actually go about doing that. Um, we need manufacturers to identify the areas of improvement in their technology or identify new technology. Great, yeah, so a lot of times it can be um, a, a, an educational um, goal, right? If, if we want manu, we are targeting manufacturers and we're saying um, they need to improve their technology or to get new technologies. So they need to understand what those technologies are and how they can better serve them. Okay, great examples. All right, we're gonna flip this on the other, uh, on the other side. So now we're gonna be thinking about the website. Um, actually, I'll go back to the previous one. Um, again, you see that uh, we didn't get into website specifics here. We were really talking about what we want audiences to do. And what you're going to want to do is first make sure you know who your audiences are, um, which can be its own exercise if you don't have audiences defined. And then generate these list of goals. What do we ultimately want to help them do? And then you can say, okay, well, where do we need to help them do that? And where can we improve how we help them do that? So that's one angle to take on this. And then the other is thinking about it from what the website needs to help people do. Um, and this again is website focused, but again, think about how this relates to the other uh, you know, tools at your disposal. So the, the exercise here is the website should help a, a particular audience um, do or achieve a goal with blank, with what type of content or engagement. So this is really, um, I think the example from before was uh, um, providing trainings um, to, to community health center um, staff. So the, the website should help community center staff improve their uh, levels of service by providing trainings. And that can be one of many types of content or engagement. So again, we'll kind of go with that same example of kind of a, a, a policy organization and a mental health organization. So one example here, the website should help policy staffers communicate policy recommendations to policymakers uh, with consumable policy briefs and 
access to experts. Um, so you'll see here we kind of did a little bit of delineation between um, what is commonly an audience for policymakers to really think through, okay, well, who are the decision makers and the, the, the vocal sort of public uh, mouthpieces of, of policy versus the, the staffers who are doing the, a lot of the, the legwork. Um, so again, the website needs to help those people, right? Because we want those policy staffers, um, we want policymakers to go out there and, and implement policy and to speak for policy. So what do we need to do and what do they need um, in order to do that? Next example, the website should help parents provide activities for mental health uh, to their kids um, with easy to implement activities, advanced search and topic pages, right? So this is, again, going back to the, the previous example of we need parents to improve the mental health of their children. Um, so the website should help them by providing activities. Um, that they can do. So that could be activity pages, that could be advanced search um, as an engagement touch point, right? And a lot of times if you go to, an or, uh, to a site where there's lots of options, you're gonna go to that search box. Um, so that needs to work well. Topic pages, right? How do I help uh, a child who's struggling with anxiety, right? A topic page that's like about helping kids with anxiety, lots of tools, lots of stuff um, is an engagement touch point. So again, all, um, I'll pause here and um, let let you take a minute to come up with some ideas for your for your own organization and put them in the chat. And also feel free to put it in the chat if you have questions about uh, this framework and how it differs from the, the previous framework. Yeah, so Alex put a, a great example in here. The website should help health center staff uh, improve patient care by making it easy to find relevant trainings. We've got another example, provide, uh, I, I think we might be missing an audience in this one, provide a blank with content, papers and presentations and resources, uh, resources such as ASTM standards. Um, yeah, so I think I think with that uh, with that example, um, we want to know uh, kind of what uh, who, who the audience is um, and, uh, you know, what what ultimately we are trying to help them um, help them do. Uh, with that, with that content, are they trying to, uh, you know, learn about new standards? Uh, it looks like maybe this one is a um, continuation of the other one. So if they're trying to understand new technologies, um, we need to make sure that we can provide resources. Um, all right, and Reed says the website should help people with lupus audience find the resources they need with clear navigation and content surfacing. Um, yeah, so the websites uh, should help. Um, 
uh, you know, particular audience, people that have lupus with resources they need. Um, and the way that you do that is clear navigation and content surfacing. Um, yeah, that's great. And I think that's, that's another area where you can, um, we'll talk about content here in a little bit, but where you really want to dig in um, about resources and what types of resources you have uh, and how those are categorized. Um, Cause that's, you know, any of these, you could really dive in, um, uh, dive in and, and explore. Um, Bonnie, the website should help military chaplains become aware of moral injury with targeted videos on this topic. Great. All right. So the website, uh, military chaplains is the, the, the audience. Um, you have a kind of a specific educational goal in mind. So learn about moral injury and then content or an engagement touch point that would support it. Um, again, the, 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 these are quick examples of this. You'd obviously, you know, with a particular audience, you'll have multiple goals. Um, uh, and for each of those goals, you'll have multiple ways that you can engage people. Um, and what you want to be doing um, for, uh, you know, as you do this is sort of grouping similar goals together, grouping similar types of content together, uh, and, and seeing how those can serve multiple audiences. Um, all right, Stefan, the website should help policymakers find exactly the content they need to help their directors, representatives set their agendas with curated outputs of content explicitly to their interest and easy ways to get in touch with, with us for support. Excellent. Yep. So uh, the website helps uh, needs to help policymakers get the content they need to help their directors set agendas. Uh, and the way that we can do that is curated outputs of content. That means that if you're a policy staffer interested in a particular topic or particular issue, you're getting the content that's going to help you. Um, uh, so that's curated outputs, um, easy ways to get in touch uh, with us for support in planning public events. So uh, curated content that's relevant to that uh, particular audience's issue, easy ways to get in touch. So, hey, if I'm interested in an issue, who do I need to talk with at the organization? And that idea about planning public events, what are the things that uh, they can do specifically um, that uh, can be helpful? Uh, the website should help connect donors to nonprofits uh, with advanced search links to partner websites, photos, and impact statements. Fantastic. Yeah, that really gets, that starts to get really detailed about the specific touch points of what needs to be there. Um, and, you know, a, a lot of times this can help really round out your, your RFP or your definition of requirements to say, hey, when we talk about nonprofits, these are the things that, that matter. These are the things that uh, audiences are going to be looking for. Um, the website should help nonprofits apply for grants to support their missions. Um, awesome. Yes, with an easy grant application interface and info on grant requirements. Yes, fantastic. This is a great uh, example of a, a really a really clear use case that targets a specific audience. Um, and you you see that with the combination of Suzanne and, and Anne's uh, statements there that thinking about nonprofits, right, and how that audience uh, that audience or service area is is modeled so that you can say okay. Nonprofits, we need to know this information about nonprofits. The audiences need to be able to find that information about nonprofits. Nonprofits need to find this information about another offering that we have. So you really start to, to build out all of the different content uh, that, that is required. And then uh, as well, um, you know, kind of how that relates to each other. Yeah, so those are um, really good examples of um, uh, these are these are all great, <laughs> really good, really good examples of, of uh, what we what we talk about with uh, uh, audience goals and organizational goals. Um, we like to start here. Uh, we recommend starting at kind of at this point because a lot of times, especially if you've inherited a legacy site, there might be a lot of content there um, that is there because of. Uh, you know, kind of historical, it, it's been there, it's always been there, that's always how we've done it. Um, someone wanted this up there and so now it's there. Um, so it's useful to look at content on a site and um, we'll talk about that in a second, but we do like to sort of step back and say, what is this website actually for? What are we trying to achieve with the website? What do our audiences need? And then those overlapping points, okay, that's where we need to focus our uh, attention and energy. Awesome. Okay. All right. So 
taking it from here. So where, where, where do you go with this? Um, so obviously we just did a couple of, uh, of examples. Um, you want to think about, have you covered all your audiences? So like I said, that, that, uh, those screenshots that we had were from the way that we kind of facilitate these types of workshops, um, using a, a site called Miro. It's kind of a great, uh, collaborative brainstorming tool. Um, but you want to use that to make sure that you've identified all of your audiences uh, and their needs. Um, does uh, your organization's goals have audiences it can target? So, you know, again, this is where uh, building that community of consensus and input uh, can really help. So it, you're, you're not just getting communication standpoint, uh, you know, perspective, you're getting communications and fundraising and programming. Um, and service policy, you know, what, whatever the, the individual parts of your organization are, um, really getting that consensus and that input about uh, what, the, what the goals are. Um, another thing that you uh, can do that you should be uh, on the lookout for as you do these exercises are, you know, are there any unmet goals in your current site? So if you, you have your list of organizational goals, you have your list of what your audiences are coming to the site to do, you can say, okay, well, oh, we don't actually have that covered here. Or this thing, advanced search came up a lot. And our advanced search, you can look at analytics and go, oh, no one uses it. Or you could just know anecdotally that it doesn't actually give you the results that you want and your audiences need. Um, so be on the lookout for, for areas where you, you're not meeting those goals. Um, also, you can be on the lookout for uh, overlaps in content and engagement touch points. So thinking, you know, some content might be able to be consolidated. Um, can any content be represented to serve different audiences at the same time? Um, you know, a lot of times, particularly with, uh, you know, heavier, denser content, um, having, having it in multiple forms can be useful for different audiences. So you might have a, a page that has the download of the full report or policy brief or, whatever longer, deeper document, uh, but you might have uh, bulleted explainers or infographics or short videos that can condense the key points of that same information or content to audiences that are not looking for the really, uh, the really deep dive. So these are some uh, sort of next steps that you can take with those explorations. All right, uh, all right, great. So we'll talk about a little bit about organizing your content. Uh, so what we had focused on a, a second ago was um, goals, organization's goals, your audience's goals, uh, what and what engagement touch points happen over uh, are, are important to that. Um, when people come to their webs to your website, they're going to see content, uh, probably a lot of content. Um, and some of that content is absolutely critical, right? Who are you? What is your organization all about? What are you doing? What have you done? What do you want your audiences to do with this content that you have? Um, and how you evaluate and organize your content is gonna be key in making sure that uh, your, your messaging is clear um, and compelling and that it's sort of leading people in the right directions. So as you're starting to think about redesign your website, here, here are a couple of things to keep in mind. Um, this is a fantastic time to update or create uh, your organizational taxonomy, and we'll, we'll, we'll explore that a little bit uh, in a minute. We've done um, other webinars about taxonomy and can uh, send some other resources around there. Um, but basically, how do you categorize your stuff um, in a way that makes sense to external users um, so that they can find and engage with the, the parts of your organization that matter to them? This is another time to uh, define or refine your content types, you know, what 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 are all the different ways that we present content on the website? Um, do we do reports? Do we do memos? Do we, we do report memos, memo briefs, right? Especially when you get in the policy uh, space, there's lots of different ways that people describe their, their types of content. Um, this is a good time to get really crisp about what those types of content are uh, and, and what they serve. Um, evaluate old content, clean house, right? If you have a lot of outstanding legacy content, um, you can look at it and go, okay, what of this do we need to, to bring over? Do we need to keep? Um, how much time and effort are we going to put into um, migrating and sprucing up the content? Um, you know, there, there, there are a lot of ways that you want to look at what you have 
and not necessarily think, oh, we have to bring everything over. Everything needs to look the same. You know, with pretty pretty much any redesign you're going to do, um, you might uh, remove some content, consolidate some content, some content. You know, even if you have a lot of really great new uh, design and whiz bang features, you're not necessarily going to put that on every single piece of content from your old site. So take the chance to evaluate old content. And then finally, identify uh, new opportunities. All right, so I'm going to just quickly touch on taxonomy. Um, again, because we have a whole other webinar that we've done on this. It's, it's, um, uh, it's, it's near and dear to our hearts. Uh, but thinking about taxonomy is the way that you uh, classify um, uh, uh, your stuff, your organization stuff. So it's a system for your content, your audiences, and your data that allows you to strategically use them across channels and systems. Um, so for instance, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, mental health, let's say anxiety, that's a topic or an issue that you can use on your website, that you could use an email, that you can use in your social media strategy, that you could use in your search engine optimization strategy. Um, and you know, the more that you can define those and get them clear, the better each piece of the, the puzzle is going to work. Um, so one of the one of the deeper exercises we do um, when we're uh, doing kind of website pre-build workshops is, is finding all of those taxonomies. Um, so that you can better organize the content for your site, uh, either through the site's structure, so the information architecture, or tags, or topics, or different categories. Um, so this is what we'll do. We'll pu I'll pull up a site from, um, I think I saw cjjc.org. I'm going to pull that up. One second. And what you can do after we do this exercise is pull up your site um, and think about the uh, different places that you might find categories. So we're going to pull up this site, cjjc.org. All right. Awesome. Thank you. All right. So when I when we talk about taxonomies and organization of content, what one of the first things that that we recommend doing is kind of going through your your top level navigation and seeing how you currently organize it. Um, so uh, I see our work, housing, land and development, immigrant rights, um, organizing history, rights based services, civic engagement. Um, so I see that, uh, you know, housing, land, and development could be a topic. Immigrant rights could be a topic. So maybe we have like an issue areas kind of taxonomy where if someone cares about immigrant rights, if we define that as a taxonomy, we can say, here's all of our content on immigrant rights. Um, sign up for emails on immigrant rights. And then you know about that uh, in your system. Uh, same for housing, land, and development. Um, so when I see rights-based services, um, I see Oakland Tenant Services, San Francisco Tenant Services, Immigrant Rights Services. Um, and this is an area where I would wonder, okay, are there, um, are there other rights-based services? Is, you, know, are, you know, are there multiple um, examples of this that then could be sort of elevated to a taxonomy? Um, I see publications, so reports, blog. So that's, that starts to straddle the line for me between um, uh, taxonomies uh, and, and content types. So this is the stuff that we put out there. So you can say, oh, we put out reports on housing, land, and development. We put out reports on immigrant rights. Um, we do blog posts about our rights-based services. Um, I see in, in the, the header here, I see displacement. Um, and, you know, is displacement a, a topic um, or is that uh, kind of part part of housing, land, and development. So what you can do um, is sort of go through, kind of scan the top level and see, okay, how do we categorize our work? How are people looking for us? Um, another great way to, to get a better sense of your organization's taxonomy um, is to go to specific pieces of content. So I'm going to click on the reports button here. And... Pull up an annual report. 
All right, so annual report might not be the best example for my purposes here because it's probably going to cover pretty much everything the organization does. So I'm going to pull up a blog post. And all right. So an exercise that, that you can do uh, is take a, a piece of content like a blog post and think of all of the, the labels that you could use to, um, to identify this that, um, that users might uh, be interested in. Um, so Oakland. Right. My, my care specifically about Oakland. I might care specifically about gentrification. I might care specifically about articles uh, that Maria Poblet um, uh, uh, wrote. And then you can kind of go through. So those are some of the, the high level things I see just from the headlines. Um, I see uh, you know, affordable units. I see uh, East Oakland. I see Oakland mayor. Right. Um, so these are all things that are uh, metadata or taxonomies around this particular piece of content that people might be interested in knowing more about. Um, uh, so that, that's an exercise that you can do to really get a sense of how are we gonna categorize all this content? So depending on where your organization is, you might already have like a really kind of clear taxonomy in place, uh, but that's something that you really want to think about and, and think about it from the standpoint of not just uh, what uh, the categories on your website are gonna be, the, the sections of your website, uh, but also how do we keep people engaged? Like what, what are things that people want to stay engaged around? All right, so thank, thank you for that volunteer. All right, um, let me go back. All right, um, so again, just, just uh, on that point, um, uh, taxonomy uh, on your site and beyond. So the, a taxonomy would be like a, a category. So like topics, um, topics or issue areas um, or service areas, and then a particular term. So like within um, topics, you could have a term like recycling or um, uh, uh, displacement might be a topic. And then you can think, okay, well, how do people uh, engage with that on, on the website? How do they engage with it over email? Um, when you use taxonomies, you can get a lot of good data about them. So how many people are engaging on a particular topic? Um, how many people are coming to that topic page? Um, you can look at that information in Google Analytics. Uh, if you model that in your CRM, you can say, oh, here are all the people who care about, um, uh, in this example, recycling or about displacement. So then you can reach out to them um, with email or with phone calls, depending on their, their other attributes. Uh, so taxonomy really works across the board. Okay, I'm going to kind of go kind of quickly through these other pieces. Uh, so we have some time for questions. Um, this is another great time to uh, refine your content types. So really, really sort of teasing apart what are the key types of content uh, that the website uh, presents? And what are the purposes of that content? Um, so, you know, events, blog posts, announcements, policy briefs, activities or activity kits. Um, Take stock of the content that you produce and really think about what purpose it serves for your audiences. So does it meet their needs? Um, and what purposes does it serve for you advancing your organization's mission? Um, sometimes that answer will be very cut and dried and clear and compelling. Other cases uh, for other types of content, it might be, oh, well, we just always have done this. Um, explore those and think of, you know, what are the ways um, that you can improve that content, um, uh, improve the organization of that content, maybe combine things. This happens sometimes with really large policy organizations where there's maybe five different ways of saying memo or policy brief. And there's lots of distinctions that are maybe not as relevant or important to outside audiences as they might be internally. Um, so that's the, the last point I'll make there is, as you're doing this, remember that um, a lot of times the organization, your site's website and the content that's presented, the nomenclature that you use um, is reflective of your internal organization, um, uh, uh, your, your org chart, the way that you see the world, the way that you categorize your work. Um, and take the time to think about if your, if your audiences actually know that model or be care about that model, right? If I'm, um, if I'm looking for mental health resources about anxiety in children, 
I might not care that you have uh, an anxiety department, right? That goes through an anxiety subcommittee that's part of this other committee. I don't care about that, right? That, that's how you get the work done. I probably don't care. I want to know, I have a, I, I need a video to help me understand how I can explain anxiety uh, to my seven-year-old. Um, so really going through that exercise. Um, a couple other quick things, and again, we'll send this around after the uh, after the, the webinar, thinking about does it serve a purpose? Does it need to be migrated? Can we improve the content? Analytics is your friend here. You can go back into analytics and see what type of traffic or engagement that content is going, is, has, has historically received, and that can be a, a good data point. Um, identify new opportunities. Are there gaps in content or organization that you should fill? Right? Is there content that you just don't have that people need? Um, taking time to think about content operations. This is a whole, whole other subject we won't have time uh, to get into here today, obviously, but how do you actually get to the content done? Um, how do you conceive of content, write it, edit it, publish it, take care of it, et cetera. Um, as you're thinking about the new site, you really gonna wanna think about uh, your, the operations of how content is produced. All right, and then finally, um, Again, started with this, I'll end with this, uh, planning for that integrated engagement. The website is one piece of the puzzle. Uh, you wanna be taking the time to think about how you're gonna be getting visitors to the site, how you're gonna convert and capture those visitors. Uh, so through a donation, through an advocacy ask, through an email sign up, um, what does that look like? And then how will you nurture, sustain and deepen those relationships with groups and with individual contacts, right? Um, again, a main goal of the website is to get that email, <laughs> to get something where you can create that more direct connection. Um, and then what are the other platforms, processes, and people that are going to be uh, required to achieve all of those things? All right. So that was a lot in a short amount of time. Um, uh, we have time for questions now. If you have questions and want to throw them uh, in the chat, I would be happy to uh, address them. Um, and uh, yeah, I see Lisa has put in the chat um, the website Miro, uh, which we use uh, and love. It's a really great collaborative tool um, for brainstorming, documenting. Um, it's great for distributed <laughs> remote work because uh, people can get in and, and basically have the equivalent of like a giant whiteboard with sticky notes. Um, and Mickey sent, uh, put a link to our taxonomy webinar recording where we go into a lot more depth about what taxonomy means. Uh, so I, help, I hope that that is a helpful uh, kind of overview of some of the key things that you should be thinking about uh, before you really start the, uh, your, your redesign process. Again, the more that you can think about that before you, before you really start, <laughs> um, before you, you know, uh, start talking to uh, developers or designers or web building firms or, or any, anything of, uh, of that nature, the better you're gonna be to, uh, the closer you're gonna be to, to being able to articulate what you need and how they can help you get there. Um, so with that, I will just pause and see if there are any, uh, any questions. Um, oh. We'll, we'll send around the recording afterwards. Uh, if you'd like to talk more with me, um, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, we, you can email, email me, you can email any of us here uh, at um, uh, PTKO and we're happy to talk with you. Uh, and uh, um, we do uh, more in-depth uh, workshops with organizations that go into all of these steps and help you really kind of get a game plan for your website redesign. Um, so happy to talk with you about this as well. And thanks again for joining us. We'll stick around for a second if we have questions.